Hi, and welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. Today is March 19th, and this is the Microbial Collusion Edition. I'm Julie Wolf. Let's dive right in on the next slide, where we will see that we are going to discuss not one, but two different reports, which were published in MBio today. So we're only going to cover one of these reports, but they're related. As you can see, one of them is titled More Evidence of Collusion, and the other one is titled Yet More Evidence of Collusion. The take-home message from both of these is that temperate bacteriophage can work with their bacterial host to protect that bacterial cell from further phage infection. So let's remind ourselves how bacteria are susceptible to virus attacks from different bacteriophage. They can... Um, be infected by a phage that enters the lytic cycle, which means that the phage will immediately begin making progeny phage and will burst open the bacterial cell uh, once enough progeny have been made. But they can also enter the lysogenic phase where the DNA from the bacteriophage will enter and incorporate into the bacterial genome itself. This is called a temperate phage, um, and it replicates every time the bacterial cell replicates, so there's definitely some benefit to the phage itself, and that phage, um, that temperate phage can also reactivate to enter the lytic cycle and make more progeny phage again. Now, in the arms race of bacterial infection and bacterial phage infection, there are a number of different defenses that the bacterial cells have come up with to fight uh, potential phage invaders. And the phages also fight back. There are a number of anti-restriction or anti-CRISPR systems that have been found uh, in recent years that are incorporated within the phage um, systems themselves. It's been known for a while that temperate phages those that are incorporated within that bacterial genome can collude with bacterial hosts, meaning that they will work together. Um, and that can work to fight infection from the same type of phage, which would be a homotypic uh, infection. So a super infection where you get more than one um, of the same type of phage. But temperate phages can also help protect the, the host against phages of different um, types. And that would be a heterotypic um, infection. And that's the type we're going to talk about with the more evidence of collusion paper, um, where the mycobacterial phage uh, SBASH has been found to specifically target a second phage called crossroads and prevent crossroads from infecting its host. So how was this figured out? Um, if we look on the next slide, we'll see that the first question that the research team asked was what genes the, the temperate phage expresses. And they saw a number of different genes which were expressed at various levels uh, as that uh, phage was expressing certain proteins or certain genes and making proteins within that bacterial cell as it was incorporated um, inside of the uh, bacterial genome. So what they looked at was the ability of this SBASH to stop the infection um, of crossroads. And you can see in the middle upper of that of those dot blots there uh, of the infections that cells mycobacterial smegmatis, which is the, the bacterial strain being merged with here, that is infected with SBASH is unable to be infected with crossroads. But when these genes uh, that are expressed during temperate um, lifestyle are systematically knocked out one at a time, there were two different genes, both gene number 30 and gene 31, which when they are eliminated, stop um, SBASH and uh, prevent SBASH from um, preventing that crossroads infection. So you can see that crossroads does uh, then infect the cells. Uh, and they then went on to characterize the genes within crossroads, which are recognized by gene 30 and 31, uh, and to characterize the, the type of um, of protection which was mediated by this SBASH phage. So why, why do we focus on these types of phage interactions and phage bacteria interactions? Uh, in our next slide, you'll see that almost all of the molecular tools which are used to manipulate DNA involve some sort of phage, bacteriophage, um, bacterial phage infection, lifestyle. Uh, and that includes things such as restriction enzymes and CRISPR, um, which are bacterial defenses against phage infection. Uh, that either chew up the phage DNA or incorporate small parts of it into the bacterial genome. Now, both of these um, studies did not identify things that will specifically manipulate DNA, uh, but they did identify different um, proteins which can 
control the activation of ion channels uh, within the, the bacterial cell. And this would be important potentially for protecting bacterial cultures, for example. Uh, and it's only by studying these very basic interactions between bacteriophage and their bacterial hosts that we will identify future tools, not only for bacteriology, but for broader biotechnology as well. That's going to do it for this Microbial Minutes session. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf. I'll be with you with the next Microbial Minutes.